welcome to part 7 of Layout of Print Books Pages. In this part, we'll look at how to put images in the document as part of putting the preliminary pages together, and we'll finish with doing text wraps around the images. So first of all, let's have a look at the preliminary pages. Roman numerals 1 to 6 on our Pages palette. I'm going to go straight to preliminary page 1, double click on that. I've got the black arrow selected, so let's see if I click on this box. Oh, there is a text box already there. If there wasn't, then you need to click on Type Tool and click and drag to create a text box. But now with the Type Tool selected, I can just click straight in there and start typing. So I can put in words or I can go to a Word file and I've already got this selected, copy, minimize it, go to edit and paste. I can get rid of that initial words. Now there's the text that I want. I can use the body text opener if I want uh, for that. And that is a blurb about the author. If you like, you can move that down by clicking and dragging that top text box because you probably won't want it right up near the top. I'll just move that around a bit. And you may like to put in an image. So I'm going to click on the rectangle frame tool or picture box as I prefer to call it just here. Then click and drag across the top and you'll see the X come up. Go to File and Place and up come these options. I'm going to choose this one which is a TIFF file that includes the title of the book. Click Open. It doesn't fit, so I'm going to right click. If you've got a single button mouse, hold on a Mac, hold down control and then click. Go to fitting and fit content proportionally. And there it is. So that's how you put an image in. If you've seen the videos on how to assemble a print book cover, this will be very familiar. And if you want to play around with the position, go to the black arrow again, click on that and perhaps move the text box up a bit. Doesn't matter if they overlap too much there. But if you don't like that, well, just grab the picture box and move that up there. So maybe down a little bit. Yeah, OK. Well, that's not too bad there. Now you go through the rest of the pages putting in the various contents. I'll flick through them towards the end and show you what I've done. But now I want to go straight to how to do a text wrap. For this, I'm going to go to let's say page two of this book. Now one way to put in an image, if I go into T for type, click on the type tool, and I click in the middle of this page for instance, and I can just hit the enter button or return key on, the, on a Mac computer. And I've created some space in which to put an image. Now for a lot of purposes this will be fine. You then click and drag and put in a picture box as you're familiar with doing. And let's say for argument's sake I want to put in uh, a picture like this using file and place. I'll put in the Overdog logo, I double click to import it. And again right click, fitting and fit content proportionally, there it is. That's one way to put in an image. I'm going to click on the black arrow now so I can move the box around a bit. I'm just going to close it in slightly. And I can move this box around. What about if I move it over to this side? And I'd like the text to go all the way around this box. So I want it to come down this right hand blank space. Well, the first thing, I'll need to click on the Type tool to get rid of all these paragraph marks. So I'm going to highlight them all and hit Delete. Well, that doesn't look too good, does it? Because it's actually gone right through, except for the main image itself. I actually want this to wrap around the picture box as opposed to the image itself. To do that, you go to Window and Text Wrap. And this particular palette comes up here. You can place this wherever you want. I'll put this down here so it's not overlapping the other ones. You'll have to have the black arrow selected, so click on that and then click on this picture box. And now the options are activated in text wrap. And let's see what happens if I click this one. OK, it's gone round the outside. Now if you don't quite like that, you can bring the picture box in a bit 
closer so there's a bit more space here that looks a bit better and if you want more space between the edge of the picture box and the text then come over and fiddle with these parameters I'm going to use this one to the right I'm going to increase it to two millimeters so two millimeters around uh, there's going to be extra space so the text doesn't bump up too closely to the picture box and that's how you do a text wrap but now I'm going to get rid of that picture box I just wanted to show you that I don't want to leave it there so I just highlight it and hit delete now I'm going to go through and put the preliminary pages in all the details and then I'll just go through them quickly before we end this video but there is one tool I better mention before I just go and put all the text into the preliminary pages and that is if you want a page break in InDesign this is what you need to do I'm on the very first preliminary page and if you can see where the cursor is flashing there's a hashtag I'm going to put in another paragraph mark just to separate that so you can see all oh right there's a paragraph mark there's a hashtag now I'm going to put in a page break I could hit the enter key on the numeric keypad to the far right of the keyboard but you may not have the numeric keypad so you may need to go type insert break character and page break and then you'll see the keystroke there so we'll put that in and this will allow me then to put in text on the next page I'll just move this up there for a moment and you can see what I'm going to do I've already copied some text and I'm going to put it in here other books by the author and I've already selected the type tool and I'm just going to put that down there now likewise after this I'm going to put another page break and then I'm going to keep filling and I'm going to put a couple of images on the title page which is facing but you know how to do all that now I'll just show you the finished result with the magic of YouTube okay I've inserted six preliminary pages or prelims as examples I'm going to go through them all but first I'm going to get rid of all those guides so it will look a bit more like the finished book I'll go down to the bottom of the toolbox click on the very bottom icon and then select preview and you can see that all those guides go so that's the very first page that a book reader would see double click on the second preliminary page other books by the author third page there's a title page where you've got the title of the book the author's name and the publisher's logo down the bottom and then the most important page in the book from a publisher's point of view and that's the imprint page it's got the name of the book which edition it is the copyright information and that's what some people call it the copyright page but formally it's known as the imprint page and then other information including permissions there that might be relevant it's the only page I've left a Roman numeral on uh, on the facing page I put a dedication in and the sixth preliminary page I've left blank because you want the first page of the text to start on a right hand page and be odd numbered the right hand pages have got to be odd numbered go back and fix it if you haven't uh, got that happening that's a, a real rookie mistake having it the other way around if you have an even number on the right hand side but otherwise we're pretty much done except for one thing how many pages have we got I'm going to scroll down 42 plus six preliminary pages well that fitted with what we did originally but the actual pages with the text stop at 25 so do we just get rid of all the other pages well no you might remember we do need to leave one extra left hand page to balance the one right hand page at the very start so what we do and we've learned this before but I'll reinforce it click on page 27 or double click on page 27 hold down shift click on the last page and another way of doing this other than putting it to the trash can go to the arrowhead at the top right of the pages palette click it and then in where it says delete pages click delete pages it will warn you do you want to delete the pages click OK and you will have got rid of them now just some quick maths before we finish up 26 pages that's how many we've got the last one is blank I've made that deliberately blank and we have six preliminary pages we have 32 pages all together don't forget to include the preliminary pages in your final count so when you do upload it to a print on demand company or you do give the file to a printing company that is going to print large numbers of copies for you you can get the exact 
number of pages, which is often called the extent in the industry. There is one more thing to do, and that's save it as a press quality PDF. And if you already know how to do this, then you won't need to watch the next video. But I suggest you do anyway. Thank you for watching, and please remember to comment, like, or subscribe if you'd like to view more videos about indie book publishing.